So that and entertainment for the record-breaking crowd here at Red Bud Track and Trail. Doug DeMocus, the wheelie king. It's round seven of the AMA Motocross Series. And the king of the 125s, Steve Lampson. I'm just trying not to think anything about any championship right now. Just kind of go race to race and try to manage, win as many races as I can. I'm not, I do have a big points lead right now, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to put my head down and not worry about the points and just uh, figure that I'm behind right now. This is the first race. Every race is the first race of the series I'm basically looking at, and uh, so far it's been working out really great. Really great might be an understatement as it's 67 points, the lead for Steve Lampson over the runner-up John Dowd. He doesn't even need to be here today and it'd be looking pretty good for Yamaha if Steve wasn't in the way. A relaxed atmosphere before the start of photo one for the 125s. Kevin Windham on the left, Damon Huffman on the right. Huffman coming back after injury, missing five nationals. A couple of former teammates here. He's a husband now. <laughs> Jeff Emmick kidding John Dowd about his recent marriage. It's really the lull before the storm here as Red Bud Track and Trail famous for fast starts. Mikel Pichon coming back off the bruised wrist injury. Tim Ferry hoping to rebound after a 12th place overall in the last event. Here's the Suzuki track map. As you can see from this complicated design, you can imagine how tough it would be to memorize this racetrack. The only change is in the upper right hand corner. They took out a long loop section and brought the racing a little closer to the fans. Right now, let's check in with Marty Reed. Chad, you know, when, when we last saw Mikhail, I mean, it looked like his wrist was broken, and all of a sudden, here he is, we're going to race again. Yeah, that day uh, at Bud's Creek, we thought it was broken at the track. He went and had x-rays done in Waldorf, and uh, they were negative. So the next morning, he flew back to Paris, got his doctor to give him his opinion, and uh, it was negative again. The only thing happened was uh, he stretched the ligaments and the tendons in his left hand by his pinky and down through his wrist. But uh, nothing's torn, nothing's broken, just a little tender still. So what can we expect here this first race back? Um, I have to wait and see, honestly. I don't know. He was riding pretty good in practice. He didn't get here till late last night because Air France was on strike, so he was able to get here. So uh, overall, if uh, we just come out of here healthy and uh, just keep our fourth plate points, we'll uh, be okay with it. Temperature going up here at Red Bud Track and Trail as the skies are clearing for the 125 Moto number one. As you can see from the flags in the background there, there's a little bit of a breeze blowing, perfect conditions. The start here is a long one, so these riders will gain quite a bit of speed before turn number one. Let's check out who gets off the gate first. Lampson, a real good start off the gate to the first turn. Pedersen, wide, Antonez to the inside, Dobb, Ferry, Deegan, all the good starts, but it's number 21, Chad Pedersen. He had the right angle coming off that first turn. If he'd have drifted a little wider, he'd have given it up to Antonez, but he's in control right now as they head for the ski jump. Last year's Skull Privateer of the Year. Oh, he feels pretty confident on the first jump. <laughs> That's going to be a little bit surprising for the guys right behind him thinking, hey, you got a long ways to go before you win, pal. Most of the still photographers were still putting film in the cameras by the time he took the feet off the pegs. Anyway, it's his best start of the year. Glenn Helen, he got a second place start and ended up with his best finish of the season, a fifth place. And you can see by all these switchbacks right now, it's a big advantage to get off the lead. It always is, of course, but especially here at Red Bud. You can see back there behind him, the rider's getting jammed up in all those corners and the big lead he already enjoys. Oh, there's some pressure behind Pedersen here. Pedersen number 21, Antonez 22, and Dobb is right on his tail. Dobb has been quick in this opening lap. He's already moved past a few guys, put himself in a position to challenge for the lead. Cutting to the inside, he gets the advantage to the outside and then puts the throttle down. Nice pass. Dobb trying to stay out of those deep ruts. You can imagine how your feet drag through there. You're going fourth gear through there in 125. It's important to pick the right line. Dobb during the Supercross season, subbing for Craig Decker and Team Suzuki when Decker was not allowed to ride doctor's orders but now Dobb is a privateer he's paying his own bills he's looking pretty good too right now his lines are coming together nice they're, now they're working their way back around to the front of this racetrack the track gets real wide right in here Pedersen Dobb number 19 Antonez Ferry and then Lampson Steve Lampson who's dominating the points race is in fifth position so Lampson not with too bad of a start, but still a lot of work uh, cut out before he can work his way to the front. Wyndham back there behind him. As long as he keeps Wyndham and Dowd behind him, he'll be looking good. He can take his time working his way to the front. Mike LaRocco, of course, lives in nearby South Bend, and this jump is named for him. LaRocco's Leap. 
125s having to double. Many of the 250s will have to double today as well. Coming out of that corner at the bottom, you get up enough speed, you can triple all the way up over that hill and uh, seem like you'd lose that much time being in the air for so long. But you land on that down slope and make it all back up. Look at Ferry. Real aggressive. Getting by Buddy Anson. And that's what you got to do in the opening laps. And Lampson's not far from following suit. Ferry, here comes Lammy. Lammy getting by Antonez. So Antonez goes from third to fifth in the bat of an eyelash. Well, Ferry got in there and just took it all away from him and pushed him wide and opened the door for Lamps. And now here comes Wyndham. A little bit different story from last year as Lammy, we see him here, took a 1-1. In fact, he got both hole shots, led every lap. At the time, it was his third straight overall in a string of four consecutive wins, getting him right back into the points race. But here in the early going, we have an independent team rider and a privateer leading the factory guns. What do you see in this blood, hmm? Interesting. And this one? I see. And? <laughs> and finally? Hmm? Oops, <laughs> my mistake. Suzuki Dual Sport Motorcycles. Four personalities, one great line. Oh, I see. What can make your tomorrow better than today? A promotion? A great paying job? A new career? At ICS, more than 10 million men and women have prepared for new careers without setting foot inside a classroom. And now at home, in your spare time, you can get your diploma or degree. Choose from any one of these courses. Then call toll-free for free information about training with ICS. Call 1-800-291-9988 right now for free information. There's no obligation, so call now. 1-800-291-9988. Chaparral, the world's largest parts and accessories, motorcycle, ATV, and watercraft dealer. Call today. Chaparral, we race what we sell. I've had a computer for a couple of years now, but to be honest, I didn't see what all the fuss was about. Then I got America Online. Now I use it all the time. It makes my life easier. Watch. Use email to send messages to family and friends. Point and click your way around the internet with America Online's great new web browser. And there's more. Scan hundreds of magazines, get sports scores, enjoy hobbies, even shop online. So call this toll-free number and get everything you need to make your life easier and more fun. Coverage of AMA Motocross is being brought to you by the reigning Supercross 125 and 250 Outdoor Champions. Honda, come ride with us. Welcome back to moto number one of the 125s. Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Marty Reed from Red Red Track and Trail. Our leader is Chad Pedersen, number 19, James Dobb, and Tim Ferry, number 20, pulling up on the leader. They're starting to close the gap a little bit. And I think Barry really initiated it. He just uh, looks like somebody lit a fire under him. Now he's putting pressure on Dobb, which in turn is putting pressure on Pedersen now. Those downhill tight turns and Ferry goes down. I was just going to say they look a little slick in that area. It's definitely slick. You can see it's just a little bit muddy there from the water they put on the track early this morning. That berm is still developing and this front wheel went over it just a little bit. And that's all it took. Buddy Antonez, number 22, Scott Sheik. Kevin Windham, all getting by Ferry. That was a costly drop. Yeah, as well as Steve Lampson, who now moves into third. He was following Ferry. They both had a good pace going, catching the leaders. Oh, Kevin Windham having his problems going off the track, but staying upright. Kevin Windham with not a bad start, but he's having trouble coming up through the pack. Let's go to Marty Reed. Ali, you don't look real happy with him. It looks like he's having trouble with the ruts. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong. He's, he started off good, and he, just, he must be riding real tight because he's not hitting the turns. He's just blowing all the turns. So I don't know what's wrong. He took another bad line back here on the straightaway. It's real rough. He got passed twice there, so I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, thank goodness he got two motos. Yeah, thank goodness. Hey, one other thing, guys. The man right behind him is the number 12. You know who that is? Mikhail Pashone. He's running in eighth position right now. Big surprise there. I didn't think he'd do that well, especially coming off that injury and the jet lag. And David, a little bit in defense of Kevin Windham. He's young and plus. He had mono last year, and he hasn't really seen this track very much. 
out in front. It's Chad Pedersen, number 21, and James Dobb is starting to hound the leader. Dobb looks pretty good right now. He seems pretty relaxed, and uh, of the two guys, it looks to me like Pedersen's pushing a little bit harder, and that's usually a sign that uh, maybe he's riding pretty close to the edge of his ability, and uh, that usually will force you into a mistake eventually. Pedersen's best finish at Bud's Creek, a fifth, and Dobb, a sixth in that same race. Dobb hounding Pedersen now as they go into the turn, and he gets good acceleration. James Dobb is our new leader. I kind of thought Pedersen would have taken a little bit longer to make a mistake, but he should have taken that inside line right there. As you can see, there's nothing wrong with it. Dobb rode it right around the inside, made an easy pass for the lead. Dobb riding very smoothly right now, and it's probably the best thing for him because Lampson, his next target is Chad Pedersen in second place. You can see right there, these guys have still got a pretty good lead over Steve. Now Steve's just coming over the jump. And I, I would imagine Steve's uh, fast enough to catch these guys. He's got Pedersen worried. He's already looking back over his shoulder. Checking out the Suzuki stopwatch now for the interval between first and fourth. It's about 11 seconds. Back to Buddy Antonez in the battle for fourth place. Scott Sheik, number 26, on the Suzuki, tries the inside. He gets locked out of there by Buddy Antonez. That was a good aggressive move. You got to go in there and try to make the rider nervous. Let him know you're there. He probably didn't think he could really make that pass, but he should, at least he wanted to show him that wheel. Scott Sheik has made three podiums this year, but has had tough transitions in between the podiums. Double digit placements. Scott Sheik to the inside, and well, Buddy Antonis went that outside line. Well, that time it did work. He had plenty of room there. That's the new section that, that they changed uh, this year. Took out a long loop section. And, Put a little bit of faster uh, sweeper there, a little bit closer to the fans, and it worked out for Sheik. He just came right across the inside and took the line away. So it's Sheik in fourth place, Antonez in fifth, and it's Ezra Lusk getting onto the scene, number 34. Then Kevin Windham, after running off the track, trying to gain some time and cut inside of Ezra Lusk, but gets locked out with the tires. It was a good idea. He could have maybe gotten a, maybe a couple of guys in there if they'd have creeped into that corner any slower. Boy, Lusk really took advantage of the situation getting around Buddy Antonez as well. So we've got Scott Sheik in fourth and Ezra Lusk in fifth now. Ezra coming off a second overall at Southwick. In fact, he had great starts at Southwick. This time, he's called upon to come up through the pack. Ezra Lusk, number 34 from Bainbridge, Georgia. Buddy Anthony has 22. Kevin Windham and Tim Ferry get, getting back on the scene. Well, Ferry had the speed. He was a little bit faster than all these guys in the beginning, but that ball cost him. Everybody went by, and now he's got to pass them all again. Mike Brown at the tail end of this pack. Boy, what a battle behind the leaders. Kevin Windham. That was a nice move. He went to the inside. There wasn't much of a berm there. He just used his balance and technique to get around. Antonez on the inside right there. And Ferry, the next one to go inside to Antonez. Ferry is really aggressive right now. I like seeing this. I wish he can uh, do this a little, bit, a little bit more consistently. I'm sure Roger DeCoster does too. The guy's so fast and so smart out there, but uh, he doesn't do it all the time. It's Dobb, Pedersen, and Lamps in our top three. We'll be back with more of what's now called the Malcolm Smith National in a moment. BH1 and Pacific Bell bring you Community First, honoring local heroes who help their communities. John Jay and the United Streets of Hollywood work tirelessly to make Hollywood a cleaner and safer place to live by helping local residents fight crime and by improving the natural environment of their neighborhood. For information or to make a contribution, call 213-876-2577. Pacific Bell and BH1 thank John Jay for putting his community first. Welcome back to the gold medal event at Montgomery Ward. Well, it has been exciting, Bob. We've seen moves on the floor we've never seen before. That's true. Free offers, exclusive values. Look at those numbers. A 150% low price guarantee on select electronics and appliances. Brand names like Sony, Maytag, JVC. Whirlpool, GE, RCA. Top name performers. That brand gets the gold on originality alone. Nobody can beat that score. Gold medal values this week at Montgomery Ward, where great brands and great prices all come together. Soon you'll be able to know immediately of statements like
like these are true. Mr. Gullible. ESPN News Network, the 24-hour sports news network from ESPN. Who else? We are back at Red Bud Track and Trail, Buchanan, Michigan. Out in front, James Dobb, a privateer. But battling now for fourth place, Scott Sheik holding on to it is Ezra Lusk. Well, for Lusk, he's got two privateer Suzuki's out in front of him. Probably wondering what's going on with that. His bike's supposed to be better than theirs. It looks like he made a nice pass right there. He does. Cuts across the inside of Sheik. I think he surprised Sheik a little bit. Sheik wasn't able to do that double jump right there. Ezra looking very smooth, moving into fourth place now. Ezra ending up the 250 Supercross series with some strong performances, decided to go to the 125 in the outdoors, hoping for a big impression. But it hasn't happened that way. He's on the last year of a contract. Well, it's been some bad starts and some bad luck. He started off at Gainesville. He had some back problems. And uh, I really felt like uh, the way he looked in the Supercross, he'd be a contender for the championship here. But he's way out of the points. And all he can do now is just string together some good finishes before the end of the season. David, I'm impressed with number 20 in fifth place, Tim Ferry. He's recovered well from going down. He's riding as smooth as I've seen him all year. And that is difficult to do, as you mentioned. And going down early and losing all those positions, he's recovered, and uh, he does. He looks fantastic. When Ferry is on, he's beautiful to watch. And uh, he's done well here before. He led a uh, portion of the moto last year here, uh, but he slipped back in the overall standings. And right now, though, he's climbing his way back to the front and looking really good. Casey Johnson having his problems on the pro circuit machine. Time and laps are starting to run thin now, but Ferry is looking very good. Let's go down to Marty. After the spill, it looks like he's doing pretty good. He's moving. Yeah, he uh, picked himself up and uh, got going, and uh, looks like he's uh, back to form. So we'll see where he can get uh, by the end of the moto. There's only a few minutes left. Where would you be happy with now? He's running in fifth. Uh, fourth. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he can get uh, the first three. They're quite a ways ahead, so if he can get past Yogi, that'd be cool. Oh, we got to go back to work here, guys. Here they come. Two Team Suzuki's fighting for position here in Moto 1, which could mean a great deal when you consider the overall with Moto number 2 coming up not too far away. Tim Ferry, number 20. Got a pretty good lead over the rest of the pack. Mike Brown coming through Wyndham. Still having his problems. He's dropped back behind Sheik now. And it looks like Pichon is just a little ways behind these guys. Here comes Wyndham right back at Scott Sheik. Kevin Wyndham with a nice move. I think the surprise here today, from especially from the Yamaha guys, is Wyndham. He just uh, he put together two overall wins back to back. Then he had some bad starts and things that you could understand why he wasn't up front in the overall. But uh, here today, a good start. He was right behind Lampson in the beginning, but he wasn't able to match their pace. Currently in seventh place. And Pichon. It'll be interesting to see if he makes a test. Now, cutting to the inside on Scott Sheik. Pichon handling that sweeper very well. Well, he's, the European guys typically don't need a berm like the Americans. And uh, he proved it right there. He just went right around the inside in a full power slide and made the move easy. We might remind our fans that James Dobb, a privateer, is leading this race with Pedersen in second place. But all of the action right now is back in fifth, sixth, and seventh spots. And if you watch Wyndham right here, I mean, it looks like he's riding great. He's got good momentum everywhere. He's going fast. His lines look good, and he's still off the pace. So that tells you how deep this field is. It has not been the best of comebacks for Damon Huffman. He's right now in 19th place. He went to Mammoth Mountain for a little warm-up race before getting back into the national scene. Our field summary with James Dobb, Chad Pedersen, Steve Lampson, Ezra Laskin, Tim Ferry. They're out front as Huffman continues to struggle. A nice move there on Tony LaRusso, number 42. LaRusso showing his stuff on his home track at Southwick with some great starts. But Damon Huffman face-planted in Tampa, tearing an ACL ligament. Impressive to see him back on the track this soon. I feel great, although, you know, the only thing right now I, I do, I'm getting some arm pump, and that's the only thing that's really going to hold me back. Let's talk about realistic goals then today. What do you expect? Well, um, I think just a good top five performance would be uh, the right way to start off. Um, I did pretty good in my qualifier. I whole shot it. So uh, on the bike, you know, they've been testing with MA on my 125 and a few other riders, Mike Fisher. So the bike's 
you know, a lot better than what it was at Gainesville. And, you know, I just need to get a little better, and then we're going to be a winning combo. Yeah, I think Damon's being real realistic right there. There's the mechanic Brian Lunas waiting for him to come around, and uh, you know, Brian's been on the circuit forever, it seems like. I'm sure he's giving him good advice, keeping him patient. Interesting, I bet, from his point of view, working with a younger rider after working with some champions. Keep the rubber side down to sign for Albert Dean as Dom leads it. Chad Pedersen in second, Lampson pressing him. First. 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 Second. Bad taco. First. No one in Supercross history has ever had a more perfect season. Honda's Jeremy McGrath, four-time Supercross champion. Now, the most difficult shots in golf are easy to make. With the Alien Ultimate Wedge, you'll be out in one swing, guaranteed. I don't care how high a handicapper you are or how little you play. You'll get out of the sand on your very first swing or your money back. Over 60% of all shots are taken within a short distance of the pin. The Alien Ultimate Wedge's triple radius design gets you out of the sand, out of the deep rough, even off hard pan. You don't need a new swing, a new stance, or a sports psychologist. All you need to get on the green is the Alien Ultimate Wedge. Call now for your free video and brochure and find out how you can get this revolutionary club in your bag. If you live for golf and want to save strokes, pick up the phone right now and order your Alien Wedge. I guarantee you, you'll be glad you did. The Alien Ultimate Wedge. There's a long one. One swing and you're out of there. Right on it. All right. Guaranteed. A few things you should know about arena football. The field is a little too small. The hitting a little too severe. And the scoring is totally out of control. It's like putting a football in a blender. This summer, step into the arena. Arena football on ESPN2. Getting down toward the end of photo number one for the one two fives here at Redbud Track and Trail. Chad Pedersen in second place, but look at Lammy. Steve Lampson, the defending champion, is putting the heat on. Dom has a fairly sizable lead. Lammy's going to have to make his move here soon. Trying the inside. Pedersen, though, has a good angle on that turn. He had just enough room over Lampson to still hold that outside line, hang on to the lead. Lampson made a good run down the inside, letting him know he's there. That's what he's got to do in these closing stages. Lampson dominating the points lead. One second place right now. Pours it on. Chad Pedersen got the tire in front of him. Lammy goes down. Pedersen back on the track in second place. Oh, what a strength move by Pedersen right there. They're both going for the same line. Lampson had the inside. Look right here. Lampson looks like he's got the pass made. I think uh, maybe their bikes got tangled because it seemed like Lampson's front end just got yanked out from underneath him. Maybe on the foot peg, but uh, big break for Pedersen right there. And a big break for James Dobb here in the final lap giving him some cushion on <laughs> Pedersen in second place. He's looking back, what happened? Yeah, there was a double take there. He's looking back <laughs> on, oh man, okay, the last lap, his palms are sweating, and all of a sudden he's like, hey, oh, good. There was a second glance, kind of shakes his head like, all right, now I can relax a little bit. This privateer, too, doesn't have a big workout schedule like a lot of the factory riders. He rides weekends, but uh, has problems getting that, that training in gear when he's not racing. Well, this should help his motivation a little bit. Anytime you're out front winning races, then all of a sudden uh, the expectation comes with that, and training usually comes right after that. James Dobb, our leader here on the final lap with Chad Pedersen and Steve Lampson still in second and third. Looks like Dobb's well on his way to a moto win here. Pedersen's just a little bit too off the, far off the pace right now, and probably Pedersen's pretty happy with second, to tell you the truth. Lampson's probably not very happy with his third place moto finish. I know he wants to go out and win them all, but uh, you know the good side of that is that neither one of these guys are challenging him for the title. So he's still going to put points on Dowd and, and Kevin Windham who are back there behind him. James Dobb looking for his first win since way back at Unadilla. 
And Chad Patterson looking for his best finish on the season, a second place. It's a great feeling right here. You don't have far to go. You know you're going to win the moto. Uh, unless you fall down or something really weird happens, which probably won't. And uh, it's just hard to tell how much energy he's had to use in this moto, but uh, right now he, he seems pretty relaxed. Well, when James Dobb gets on the telephone to prospective sponsors, he's got something to talk about now. <laughs> yeah, he does. The moto win is a great feeling. The checkered flag and James Dobb back in the victory circle once again. James Dobb, Chad Pedersen, Steve Lampson a third, Lusk in a fourth, and Tim Ferry comes back for a fifth. It's Brown with the Pashon and Dowd and Antonez rounding out the top ten. Dobb just coming off the track and Marty's with him. James, you look absolutely spent. Congratulations on your first moto. Yeah, this has been a hard year. I mean, uh, Quicksilver, that was out me. And uh, uh, PE. And uh, I just give it everything I got. Um, I have nothing left. But uh, I'll see if I can rest up and come out for the next one. But we'll see. Well, was it the start or was it just the will today? Because they were closing on you at the end. It's like I haven't got a practice bike. And I'm not making any excuses, but I haven't ridden. I never practice. I just race, so it's difficult just coming here when they're putting in so much effort. Well, James, we're going to let him go. He's got to sit down, fellas. I mean, he is about ready to fall down. He is a flat exhausted. Well, after a year that hasn't been really up to his expectations, Chad Pedersen has a happy day of it, placing second. Let's go back to Marty. Chad, your best run of the season. Uh, take us through it. What was the key? Well, on this track today, you know, I kind of need a really good start, you know, because I uh, get a good uh, lead out. And uh, pretty much I just, you know, just rode as fast as I could. And I just rode good that moto. And Lampson was the uh, only one that catch me a little bit. But I felt good and hopefully I can put it together for the next moto. Take us through what happened when you and Lampson came together. Well, he was coming. I had the outside line. He had the inside line. And we we're just going for the same groove. And I saw his bike kick up a little bit, and I just gassed it and got in front of him, and it just, like it turned out to be in my advantage. Will James Dobb gather it up in time for motor number two? We'll find out when we get back. You're drawn to it by some bizarre attraction. You find you are not alone. MTV's Buzzbin CD, a first time gathering of one dozen of the most consuming tracks from the MTV Buzz Clip collection. So get it and get this and 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 this because right now during Suzuki Fest summer when you buy any dual sport motorcycle you'll get an accessory kit with over $300 in Suzuki gear including a Suzuki gear bag backpack goggles and much more you can also get some incredible deals so get to your participating Suzuki dealer get yourself a dual sport and get a $300 accessory kit free so you can look good under all that mud Right, what you do is take the body out and the head's gonna fall. You got a rip. You got a dick. Ivan Robinson battles Pete Talaferro Sunday at 9 p.m. Welcome back to Red Bud Track and Trail, Art Ekman and David Bailey. Moto number one of the 125 is a haven for the privateers and independent team riders. James Dobb winning for the first time in a long spell. I was glad to see that. I know he's got the speed, but it's been a little while. And I think when you bring in an outside sponsor like Quicksilver, you want to prove to them that you've got the speed to win. It looks like James gave it all he had. <laughs> Pro Circuit's Chad Pedersen has not been a lucky rider this year, going down quite a bit of the time after a great privateer season last year. But Chad was able to hold off Steve Lampson. Yeah, and I was impressed. Anytime the privateers can pull off uh, heroic moves like that in the end, it's great to see. He wasn't intimidated by Lampson, and I don't think Lampson's feeling 100% in that show. Damon Huffman disappointed with his comeback effort. Tim Ferry should be encouraged, though. What about Kevin Windham? Well, I think Kevin just hasn't seen a lot of these racetracks. Last year, remember, he was sick a lot, injured, and uh, he's still in a learning curve. 
Let's get out of the starting line. Launch back. Hey, this gate's not legal, is it? Yeah, Art, what I think they're talking about is that normally there's a 4x4, four four, something behind the bike that keeps you from backing up too far behind that starting gate so you don't get a big run at it. And here it's just sort of a little dirt bank and it's it's further back than normal. Does Lampson have a problem with the bike? Cliff White, he's leaning in there, the engine expert. Mike yeah. Gosler. Yeah, I don't know if there's a problem with it, but uh, we're checking it out, making sure there's not a problem with it. If there was, there's enough guys there to take care of it, that's for sure. <laughs> Time running out before we get ready for the second moto. Boy, would that be a turn of events. Well, with the point lead he's got, Art, that would just make it fair for everybody. There's Jeff Stanton. <laughs> yeah. It's his hometown, a happy new father, helping out Steve. He announced his retirement at this track not long ago. Uh, I sure didn't like hearing about that, but he won a lot of titles before it was his turn to hang it up. Marty Reed's at the starting gate. All right, guys, as we get ready for this the second moto, two things we want to point out. Does James Dobb have enough physical strength to go another 30 minutes? And right next to him on the starting grid, Steve Lampson, they just made it to the starting line. Apparently from that crash in the first moto, they did a lot of damage to the radiator and had to replace it. They just got to the line, and they say everything's sound, but uh, you look at them, and they're checking everything three times as uh, they're getting ready to go. James Dobb right next to Lammy. Wonder if he has any energy left from the way he was uh, pretty tuckered there after the, the first moto, but a great win for James Dobb. All right, that gate can drop at any moment right now. And they're off. Huffman, Tim Ferry, Steve Lampson, Mike Brown, and it's uh, Damon Huffman getting the whole shot. Boy, he's turning disappointment in the first moto into a grand start here in moto number two. Tim Ferry in second place, Steve Lampson in third. Another decent start for Lammy. And if I'm not mistaken, Art, this is the first time Huffman's led a 125 race in uh, all year. Huffman won. Ferry two. Lampson third. Bichon in the fourth in front of Mike Brown now. So this is going to feel pretty wild for Huffman right now. As I pointed out, he hasn't led a moto in the 125s all year. Missing a lot of races, of course, but uh, this, is, this is the first chance he's had to race with Steve Lampson. Now he's got Lampson uh, not breathing down his neck, but I have a feeling he will be before this moto's over with. There's our leader, Huffman, Lampson, and Fer Ferry goes after Lampson, almost put him down. That was a slick move by Ferry, and you got to do that in the early laps when guys are trying to settle into their pace. That's the time to make your move. Uh, once you get around them, even if you're still a little sluggish, they still got to find their way around you. And by that time, you're already establishing your rhythm. Right now, Ferry looking fantastic. And he made it through that area he fell down earlier. Look at those huge ruts, though, as Ferry almost got crossed up. Oh, he did a nice job, though. What you want to do is keep your front wheel out of those if you possibly can. He just basically rode a wheelie all the way through there. You're on a wheelie, the front front wheel obviously isn't going to be a problem. Damon Huffman in first place. Ferry, though, is on the follow, and he's tightening things up. Boy, Ferry would love to see his first moto win of the season here at the Red Bud Track and Trail. Oh, we've got a tight threesome there with Mike Brown now moving by Pichon in fourth. Now you got three fast guys leading this race right now. Huffman's got some speed. Ferry. Looks like he's on a rampage right now, and Lampson, well, we don't need to say anything about him. We know he's fast, but I'm impressed with the aggressiveness right now from Ferry. With the ruts getting deeper and deeper, especially in the downhill turns, what's it like on the 125 to stay out of trouble? Well, in the first lap, you know, they've put a little bit of water down here and there, and uh, the track has changed a little bit from the first moto, so the, to see that uh, Ferry's going so aggressive right now, he's taking big chances because the situation is different. It takes you a little while to establish your rhythm. End of lap one. Damon Huffman still in the lead. Ferry, Lampson, Brown, and Pichon the order. Huffman doing a good job picking the right lines. Oh, Ferry tried to take the inside. Who told him to get aggressive? I don't know. They got extra caffeine in his Gatorade or something. But he, <laughs> oh. Huffman's probably wondering, what the heck? Look right here. Huffman's taking pretty much the inside line. There's no room. Ferry just thought he'd go in there and punt him out of the way. It would have worked if uh, it was maybe a different corner. But I don't know if that was the best place to try that move. And once again, he loses a lot of spots. Ferry with contact with Lampson, then Huffman. But right now, it's Damon Huffman trying to hold off. The defending champion and the leader of the points, Steve Lampson on Team Honda. 
That's not going to be easy, and it's only because it's not because of the ability of Huffman, but just because of the experience. He hasn't had a chance to go out there. He talked about arm pump. Uh, well, here's a classic example of when that arm pump will occur when you got the national champion breathing down your neck. And Lampson's got the good angle on the inside. This matchup of Steve Lampson and Damon Huffman, we might have expected more of at the beginning of the season, but of course the injury's cutting into Huffman. That's a shame, too. Uh, you know, there's a few guys I thought could have really challenged uh, Steve Lampson, but everyone's had problems, and you know, that's a real testament to Lampson keeping his cool and riding through all those problems. Okay, it's Lammy out in front, Damon Huffman in second. Mike Brown looks like he wants to really test Damon Huffman there. Ferry has moved in behind Brown, and then we've got Pichon. It's one of the trickier sections on the racetrack. You don't realize how steep that hill is. When you come down to the shade right there, it's so bumpy and you can't see him. So Lampson back on track for his third straight overall. We'll be back. It's over eight feet long and most of it's chrome. Six cylinders, six carburetors, 1,520 cc's. It's the biggest motor you can get on two wheels. And it's made right here in America. You can't wait. Valkyrie from Honda. Can your radio do this? Only one radio can give you stereo sound this big, yet is small enough to fit almost anywhere. The extraordinary new Wave Radio from Bose. Press the remote control and hear sound from a radio like you've never heard before. Big, rich sound that fills the room. You hear music the way it was meant to be heard. Clear, full, incredibly lifelike. You've got to hear the Wave Radio to believe it. And now you can, in your own home. Satisfaction guaranteed. Call us toll free to learn how. And we'll deliver the Wave Radio to your door. Experience big stereo sound from a radio. Call today for more information. It will make a difference in the way you listen to music. A big difference. Welcome back to Buchanan, Michigan. Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Marty Reed. Moto number two of the 125s and Demon Huffman is battling it out with Mike Brown after Huffman has been passed for the lead by Steve Lampson. You know, in Huffman's defense, with all, this, all these guys breathing down his neck, you know, even if he didn't even have an injury, and he just sat out five races and tried to come back, I mean, he'd have a lot to uh, try to get adjusted to, and the arm pump, of course, would be a problem, and it'll take him a race or two to get back to the speed where he can run. And to some of the young phenoms like uh, Damon Huffman, you kind of forget how young they really are. No, he's got forever to uh, mature into a, a great rider and plenty of time to win a lot of titles, and I'm sure that he will. Well, you got to pick the right corn row going through those ruts, that's for sure. And here's Mike Brown. Very nice squeeze play. I don't think Huffman knew he was that close. Huffman just went in there minding <laughs> his own business. All of a sudden, he's like, wait, this guy's in my way. Where'd he come from? So that, was, that was slick by Brown to get in there and... I actually sneak in there and take it away from Huffman. Mike Brown, of course, he's had his problems with injuries all year. After a 5-2 at Gainesville in the opener and a third overall, that was his best performance of the year. And a good duel going on as Huffman wants it back again. Mike Brown got injured and did not appear at Sacramento, the second motocross of the year. In fact, he didn't come back to Bud's Creek, and he came back a little early, David. Uh, typically, you want to come back and ride at the pace that you were riding before you left, and uh, that's always tough to do. It takes a little while to establish that groove. Let's go back to the mechanics area with Marty. Guys, Mike Brown is putting on the best ride we've seen in quite a while. Remember, he's coming off that injury on the right wrist. I talked to him right before the race. He said he was about 80% and that it really didn't bother him except on the hard landings. It doesn't look like, look like it's bothering him at all right now. That's for sure. Damon Huffman now is getting another challenge. And it looks like Tim Ferry. Look out, Damon. I know. I was about to say, better keep your legs up out of the way. It's very... You know, does run with a lot more intensity today and aggression and there's a fine line between riding with that much intensity and making good decisions and uh, already saw early in the moto he tried to get around Huffman and 
Uh, maybe it was a bad decision. He cost him a few spots. Otherwise, he may be on the lead right now. Well, it looked like he was kind of reaching out for that aggression, too, without a good spot to box out or to make contact. Right. Exactly. It was just a bad decision. The wrong place on the racetrack to do it. Right here, coming up the inside. He's letting Huffman know he's there. He's just a bro. Oh, a tap on the back wheel. And Ferry once again makes contact for the pass. Yeah, Huffman's just going, man, just get away from me. <laughs> you know, guys used to bother me like that. Johnson, of course, is one of them. Hannah was another. I mean, uh, Brock Glover, Jeff Ward, guys like that. I mean, they were aggressive and they bothered me back there, but they, they didn't just stay on me. Like guys like Keith Bowen, who's uh, from nearby Michigan here. And, uh, you know, when they're behind you, it makes you think a lot. It makes you worry about what line you're going to take and if they're going to run over you. Steve Lampson is our leader, Mike Brown in second, and Ferry now has moved into the podium spot, the third spot. Huffman's already starting to lose a little bit of time to Ferry. Ferry just really riding aggressive this week. I mean, a, a major change visibly that I can see uh, from the week's past. And uh, this pace, it should carry him up to the leaders. I mean, the way he's riding right now, if he doesn't make any mistakes, he should be able to catch up to Lampson. Well, it's no secret that uh, there's been a disappointment in Tim Ferry's overall performance over the last season. As we take a look back at Ezra Lusk, Pedro Gonzalez, and John Dowd. Dowd has had an awful day. And I think it's just the start, really. I mean, you, you can't really get up there and battle with these guys unless you get the start. It's having to come from behind and battle. You can see the battle he's in right now. He should, he should be ahead of these guys. He has been all year so far, and a bad start will leave you back there. As Relus getting by Pedro Gonzalez, the former Mexican champion who's tried his hand here for the United States. John Dowd is the next one to try and get by Pedro. It's also one of the faster racetracks in the circuit, too. It's, it used to be a little bit more technical, but now uh, they've, they've taken out some of the Supercross stuff, some of the more technical things. And on a 125, on a track this fast, everyone's wide open. It's just really tough to make up time. A fast track with so many turns. Look at Dow, though, on the outside, keeping that speed, puts the pass on Pager on the outside. That's usually a pretty good place to pass. You catch the guys by surprise. They're looking for you on the inside and go around them wide. Well, that's a slingshot straightaway before this sweeper, and Dowd now, maybe he can put some pressure on Ezra Lusk and move up a notch. Well, he's got the speed to do it, and he doesn't have Pedro in the way anymore. Pedro riding a good race, but just not quite enough of a match for both these guys, Dowd and, and Ezra Lusk. Ezra Luss kind of being the sneaky, quiet guy as he moved up in Moto 1 to fourth, and now he's making a move now for important points. He needs to. He's pretty far back in the overall point standings, and he, here's a guy that we talked about a little bit that should have been up there a little further, or we would have expected to anyway, especially the way he rode the Supercross series. Our Suzuki Field summary is Lampson still the leader, Mike Brown in second, Tim Ferry in third. Well, anything can happen now with Ferry if he should get close to the second place rider. <laughs> I don't think he's going to care if it's his teammate or not either. He's yeah. just aggressive, and that's that's good. We need to see that as long as he doesn't make foolish mistakes along with that. John Dowd trying to catch up with Ezra Lusk in their personal war behind the leading group. And their personal war has picked up the pace, and now they're starting to close in on Mikel Pichon. Pichon after an eighth place finish coming off the injury. And I would imagine that wrist is still pretty sore. He left the United States thinking it was broken, but in France, it was diagnosed as simply bruised ligaments. John Dowd, always the strong finisher, is trying to take on Ezra Lusk. And if we know he's a strong finisher, you know the riders out there realize he's a strong finisher too. Lusk knows that. John Dowd, nice clean move inside. Yeah, Lusk just left a little bit too much room. Dowd had a good line come up that straightaway on the inside the whole way, taking his chances going through those ruts. Pichon just stole a little glance over his shoulder. He knows these guys are coming. Oh, boy. And if one gets by, the other one could, too, with any momentum on this track. Dowd coming down that hill around the tree right there, barely made that berm. The bike is fishtailed, and he landed in it. That was uh, a little bit lucky. John Dowd trying to hold off Ezra Lusk, and at the same time, get around the guy from Le Mans, France, Mikel Pichon. <laughs> All those guys in that corner kind of got jammed up. Neither one of them had a good line through there. Dowd with a lot of different lines, looking at him way over to the right. He's trying to carry a lot of speed into the corners. On the 125, momentum is the key. If you go in there and scrub off any speed in the corner, you pay for it all the way down the straightaway. And right now, John Dowd is just trying to maintain as much momentum as he can, try to get around Pichon on straightaway. 
his mechanic uh, asking him to relax now as he's in good position to pass Mikel Pichon. I was going to say, too, that momentum is so important coming out of a turn when you have jumps like they go through right here. Ezra Lusk and John Dowd with a chance to pass Pichon in the same area. Now you were right, Art. <laughs> One went around, they both went around. Dow was just hounding, and I don't think Pichon was really ready to deal with the battle like that, especially with that wrist. Number seven, John Dowd is on the move. Back with more of the Malcolm Smith National in a moment. Street in Costa Mesa. In America, you are not required to offer food to the hungry or shelter to the homeless. There is no ordinance forcing you to visit the lonely. In fact, nowhere in the Constitution does it say you have to provide anything for anybody. Thank you for all you've given. Imagine what more could do. The first of its kind, a terrific new President's poster and card game. If you love America, you'll love the colorful red, white, and blue President's poster and card game loaded with historical facts, plus astrological signs and traits of the Presidents. A truly unique collector's item. It's fun and educational for the entire family. Order now and receive this beautiful poster and card game set for just $16.95 plus shipping and handling. Or mail check or money order to the address on your screen. Call 1-800-847-5440. Here's ESPN has been working to improve Improve sports for the fan. With this new helmet, ESPN commentators can interview a batter while he's at the plate. Slugger Mickey Mantle demonstrates. Hey, Mick. Can you hear us, Mick? Is this distracting? Boycotted by players, the helmet did lead to a breakthrough in coverage for all sports. ESPN Net Sports Zone. With Peter Gammon's baseball column, player profiles, everything you need to be a better fan. ESPN Net Sports Zone. Technology for you. We are back to motor number two, one, two, five. The Suzuki stopwatch to check the interval. Our leader, Steve Lampson, just passing by. Second place, Mike Brown, about seven seconds back. And then you've got Tim Ferry in third, another three and a half seconds back. Well, Ferry's not that far back, considering a uh, little mistake that cost him their early going. He's been able to recover and seems like he's chipping away a little bit of time out of the leaders. And John Dowd is picking up some time on Damon Huffman as we see. Oh, it's got Sheik has gone down hard. This looks like the same place that Larry Brooks went down last year. Around in the front side of the racetrack in that tall grass. Uh, doesn't look like he's going to be getting up anytime soon. Oh, Sheik took a hard fall at uh, Bud's Creek as well. You might remember that uh, was in the same location that Mikel Pichon thought he'd broken the wrist. Mike Brown getting hounded now by Tim Ferry. Ferry cuts to the inside, now to the outside, trying to get around the Honda of Troy Ryder. Will he bump him? <laughs> I, I say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Percentages are pretty good right now. Well, what I do like is that he's taking different lines everywhere. You can't pass if you're following him. He's just trying to create something, and here he goes down the inside again. Tim Ferry with some speed on the downhill. Who breaks last? Tim Ferry has a nice edge. Mike Brown can't come out by cutting underneath. Ferry looks like he's riding a 250. He's got great acceleration coming out of the corners. He's in the right line. He's got the balance is good. Uh, there's a big difference between riding the berm and riding just short of the berm. If you ride just short, you just get a lot of wheel spin. And right now, he's a slingshot out of all the corners. Oh, it's good to see Scott Sheik finally getting up on his feet. While out on the track, Tim Ferry looks like a totally different rider this week. Ezra Luskin, John Dowd, fifth and sixth. The battle is on. Dowd cutting across the inside. He could have uh, he could have gone in there and made things difficult for Ezra Lusk right there. A little bit polite. Okay, I think he realized he didn't have quite enough to go in there and stuff him. But it's a good idea. If he's close enough, he can do that again the next lap. Or they get good speed on that straightaway, that sweep. I'm glad to see that. These guys get a chance to unwind. and uh, so The tracks have become so super cross lately. That I think it's kind of taken some of the motocross element out of it. What about breaking downhill? Looks dangerous. Well, it's difficult because the track is so rough. You can see there's rocks poking up here and there. And you've got to pick exactly the right line using both brakes hard, especially uh, Dow did that time to try to make that inside line coming in so hot like that get around luck. Down in fifth position, trying to pick up things. His next assignment is Damon Huffman. Brian Berry is mechanic looking on. Incidentally, our leader is taking away with it, and that's Steve Lampson. 
trying to add more advantage to his points lead. And a pretty good second moto for Damon Huffman. First moto was just a, kind of a disaster for him, just getting his feet wet, bad start, arms pumped up. And uh, changing that with a whole shot in the second moto, it's got to be a better finish for him. And it will be, and I would expect him to get stronger in the, in the weeks to come. But right now, Dowd is on the move. If Huffman should hold on to a fourth place finish, that would be his, that would tie his best finish in a moto this year. But John Dowd has other ideas. Cutting to the inside, let's go to Marty. Hey, Brian, what fire did you light under his butt? He is flying. Uh, I don't think we had to do anything. He was so mad at himself. You know, we just kind of tried to tell him maybe where he was going slow and stuff. But uh, there's really nowhere in particular he was going slow and just needed to get a little more aggressive. I think he's done it, so. Yeah, I'd say that. He's moving up. I hope he keeps moving. The battle for third place now in moto number two is on. It is really hot. Dowd fishtailing just a little bit. Couldn't take Brown to the inside. Tries the outside now. Good speed. Looks back as the angle. He's now in third place. And he's just riding right around everybody. It's amazing how fast he's going. And it's, it, I can see Brian Berry is... <laughs> Little different look on his face, right? Yeah, he's smiling now, going, all right. There's no reason to even put the signal board out now. He's obviously got it under control. And Jeff Nutter reminding Mike Brown, hey, don't give up now. You're in a good position. As Damon Huffman coming up on Brown. Gets a nice block pass on Brownie. That's good to see. Huffman's not afraid to get in there and get aggressive, so he's already starting to learn. Takes a while to come back, as I pointed out. I mean, if he just sat out without an injury for five races, it's tough to come back and get used to riding against these guys again and who you can ride with and, and uh, who you can get aggressive with, who's going to get aggressive with you. He obviously knows the ferry's going to run into him, so that's, that's one lesson he's learned today, but he's getting more comfortable. And Brownie's not through with the battles right now. Says Relux, number 34 sweeps around him on the corner. So now Brown, who ran as high as second at one point, has found himself getting passed by just about everybody, dropping back to sixth. So it's, you know, we, we have to understand that he's had an injury as well. And just like Huffman, he's trying to come back. He's got a little more uh, under his belt than Huffman does, but still it's tough to come back. And right now in the heat of the summer, uh, he's starting to fade a little. Our Suzuki Field summary has our leader, Steve, laps out in front. We'll be back in a moment. Steve Lapson, the leader here in moto number two, gunning for an overall. Number one has an 11 second lead on second place. So while all that infighting was taking place for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, Lammy was taking advantage of it. Well, he's padding his points lead some more. He got aggressive around that corner right there. There's his mechanic. This is tough for the mechanics here because there's so much, uh, it's so hilly. They don't get to see the riders very much at all. Oh, the heel clicker on LaRocco's leap. My goodness. He's obviously comfortable with the lead he's got and the time remaining. I thought Ferry was riding pretty hard, but uh, Lampson must feel like he's got it now. And because of the way the riders have finished behind him with that third in the first moto, winning this moto, he's going to get the overall today. And if Tim Ferry finishes second, he'll take a second overall, his best of the season. Coming around for the final turns, Steve Lampson as he heads toward the checkered flag, the heel clicker. He's taking on a little Showtime stuff right there. His fifth overall victory of the season. Steve Lampson, Ferry will finish second. John Dowd third. Huffman a nice fourth on the comeback. And Luskin fifth. Mike Brown, Bashone, Wyndham, Gonzalez, and Brian Deegan, the top ten. Okay. Well, we're down here with second moto winner and overall winner again. It says getting to be a habit. Congratulations. Thanks. It feels good to be back up here and uh, win this moto. I worked pretty hard for it. I uh, had a few run-ins with Ferry there. You kind of, I passed him pretty clean. Came back and stuffed me pretty good. So uh, that was the end of that. He uh, he fell back a little bit. He tried to stuff somebody else. So uh, kind of messing up. <laughs> uh, right before the race, we found out you had to change radiators, and I mean the bike really was late getting to the line. Uh, did you have any kind of nervous feeling out there at all? No, not really. My mechanic, Mike Gosser, I mean, he goes through the bike great every time, and uh, there's just a little bit of detection of uh, smelling coolant, but we had to change the radiator so a little bit when I got on the motor, so it ran fine. I didn't have a problem out there at all, so it was great. Congratulations. Great win. So more preventative for Steve Lapson as he takes the overall. We're looking at the Suzuki overall results board. Ferry in second. Ezra Lusk, a quiet fourth and fifth to take a third overall. I'm most interested to see what Tim Ferry tells Marty Reed. How about it? Well, congratulations, Mr. Ferry. A, a good run there. 
Yeah, it's, it's about time. You know, I haven't put my, uh, my Suzuki out front in the winter circle in, since last year, you know, and they've been uh, wanting me to do it, and they've been on me to do it, and finally, you know, I do it. Uh, some of your competitors might say that you are a little physical out there. How would you describe your riding style? Well, you know, I've been taking everybody's crap all year, you know, and uh, I, I'm just tired of it. You know, I want to win, and um, I'm going to do whatever it takes. If it means me crashing, you know, at least, at least I'm going for it, and at least I'm not being passive, you know, letting everybody take advantage of me. Well, second place in this moto, good run. Thanks, Marty. Great job down there on the one, two, fives. As we take a look at the series point standings, Lampson by 80 points, David. That's enough, I would say. I think he can relax <laughs> now. Just a little bit different uh, from last season where he had to win it in the last moto. And I thought that after Wyndham won two overalls in a row, maybe he was coming after Lampson the way Lampson came after everybody last year. But with the way he's ridden the past couple of weeks, uh, I don't think that's going to happen now. McGrath guns for his sixth overall in seven races. Resumes his rivalry with Jeff Ebbe coming up next. Almost 20,000 fans have flocked to the latest round of motocross action to witness the rivalry of the 90s. Jeremy McGrath gets a shoe shine. He's loose and ready. I'm up for anything these days, you know. If there's jumps, there's jumps. I can handle it. If there's not, then I can twist the throttle as well. Jeff Emick's popularity around the nation continues to grow, but here at Red Bud, where he's a three-time winner, it's at its peak. I've been doing a lot of work at home, and I've been trying to get everything done and get a lot of practicing in and working real hard. And then they come out, you know, I like can have another rider fall right in front of you, you know, and kind of mess you up a little bit. But, I mean, you know, I guess uh, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. So it looks like I got to get going. Mike LaRocco lives just a few miles away across the Indiana-Michigan state line, and he'll have his own cheering section of family and friends here today. They even named a jump here at the track after him, LaRocco's Leap. It's good to be home, and uh, I have still a lot of people behind me, and uh, it, it, it makes you anxious, anxious to win. Mike LaRocco talking things over here down at the starting gate with Suzuki teammate Ezra Lusk talking strategies as Damon Bradshaw gets ready. Damon showing some speed against Jeremy McGrath at Southwick and a very relaxed Ryan Hughes. On the other hand, Larry Ward looking rather concerned, taking a deep breath. The weather's changing. Let's go down to Marty Reed to the starting line. As you can see by the thermometer, it is dropped 10 degrees. That's the good news. Bad news is we've already had some light sprinkles. And as you can tell by looking at all the guys on the starting line, it is too late to change tires. If it gets heavy in the rain department, everybody's on the wrong rubber. Well, I think the key there is, Art, is that it would be everyone is on the wrong rubber. So there'd be no advantage. They'd all be slipping and sliding. Coming into this round, Jeremy McGrath with a 42-point advantage in first place over Emig. Then LaRocco, Albertine, and Henry rounding out the top five of the AMA Outdoor National Series. Sign is sideways. Jeremy's coming off a couple of hole shots at Southwick, but Emig has to be the hole shot king so far this series. Both Emig and McGrath off to good starts. It looks like Emig will get the hole shot. Yes, he does. Oh! End over end, Greg Albertine. His bike ran over Phil Lawrence. You see Phil Lawrence down on the track right there. I believe it's someone on the inside that's down. Could be Doug Henry. Ryan Hughes is part of a seven-rider melee here. Everybody going down. It was just a domino effect. It's hard to tell what happened first. It looked like uh, somebody got sideways. Albertine had nowhere to go. And Phil Lawrence is okay, but it looked like he just got run over by everyone. See if we can figure out what happened. Looked like uh, Lawrence was the first one to get the high sided off the back of somebody. Albertine ran right over him. Henry, uh, I believe, got taken out. He's on the outside. That was lucky for Phil Lawrence to walk away from that one. Meanwhile, out front, it's Jeff Emick and Jeremy McGrath. The rivalry duel is underway here at Redbud Track and Trail. Number one and number two out front again. It seems like a replay from every race. These guys always out front like this. Emick. Always got the pressure from McGrath. He never can relax. Emig, McGrath, then it's Swank, Button, and Larry Ward. Look at the pressure that Jeremy puts on Emig. He's right there, everywhere. Everywhere around the track, Emig cannot relax. Jeremy's front wheel is just in the way every time he goes to put his foot out for a corner. And that usually forces Emig into a mistake early, and he's got to play catch up the rest of the race. But right here, Emig does have just a little bit of breathing room. Larry Ward has now moved into 
Fourth place behind Brian Swank. And it's a freight train effect for the lead. Good run for the Honda Troy team so far. Track starting to get rough and all those berms. Look at Emick throwing it sideways, protecting that inside into this corner. The track really running up, especially on the downhill tight turns. And Jeremy McGrath looks like he's just looking for the opportunity. Again, it just looked like he's going to go in and run over his toe, putting the pressure on. Emick had a little breathing room back there for a moment, but Jeremy has poured it back on. He's right there. You can see he doesn't follow ever. He's a master at creating new lines, new ways around, guys. McGrath hounding Emig for the lead here in the early going of photo number one. And Jeremy McGrath gets by Jeff Emig fairly easy. Well, he does that triple. He came out of the corner. They came out with the same amount of speed, but Jeremy's jumping ability just a little bit better. Got all the way over that triple clean. So Jeremy McGrath passing early for the lead now with Jeff Emig trying not to let him get away. Oh, it's going to be a fight. This is Jeff's track. He's won here three years in a row on a 125. Last year, he lost the overall just barely, and he wants it bad now. The finish of the first lap. It's Jeremy McGrath, Jeff Emig, Brian Swank, and Larry Ward as we take a look at the field summary. We'll be back with more action from Redbud in a moment. And in other news, police continue to search for kidnapped computer expert Clayton Rifkind. Mr. Rifkind is the best-selling author of How to Get Ahead in Business with Computers. Stay tuned for a detailed report after these messages. Looking for a powerful but affordable business PC? Call now and for just $18.99, you can own this Dell Dimension business PC powered by a 133 megahertz Intel Pentium processor. It comes with 16 megs of EDO RAM, a 256K pipeline burst cache, two megs of video RAM, and this Trinitron monitor. It has a 1.6 gig hard drive, an 8X CD-ROM, even a 28.8 fax modem. Dell Dimension PCs have won awards and accolades from major computer and business magazines. Small wonder 80% of the Fortune 500 have bought business PCs from Dell. So call to order your Dell Dimension PC with a 133 megahertz Intel Pentium processor. For just $18.99. Thank you for calling Dell. Throw the Suzuki Katana 600 at a few of your favorite curves. You'll like how it feels, how it looks, and how much fun it is to ride. Pretty soon, you'll realize that life will never be the same. The Suzuki Katana. We are back at Buchanan, Michigan. Doug Henry's chest protector. Look, at it's inverted right there, and he's having problems with his teeth. Evidently, he hit the handlebars with his face. Marty Reed is on the scene. Marty, can you tell us a little bit more what the situation is? Guys, one of the many that were involved in that crash, Doug Henry, you can see he's being uh, attended to right now. We'll give you an update as soon as we have word on his condition. Well, David Bailey, it looks like uh, definitely he's got a tooth problem. It looked like he even has a tooth in that left hand. Well, somebody get me some Novocaine. I broke a tooth playing football, and it's no fun. This is a real bummer for Doug Henry. He's had some bad luck, and the guy's tough. He battles through it all, but it seems like there's always something. It's a little bit like Ryan Hughes. Jeremy McGrath, our leader, Jeff Emig in second. Here's the battle for third. Brian Swank of Honda of Troy and his teammate Larry Ward right behind him. This track at Redbud, because it's so fast, doesn't get quite as rough as it's gotten in the years past. You see both these corners... There's not a single bump anywhere in it. This is wide open, and when it's wide open like that, it's really tough to make up time. Swank has got great speed. He's quicker than Ward and pulling some breathing room right now. This track has had many memorable moments, that's for sure, but for our Suzuki flashback, let's step back to last year. And like always, it was Jeremy McGrath out front to an early lead. Pulling away from the rest of the pack in the first moto, which left Jeff Emig and Mike LaRocco to do battle. Watch what happens right here. Jeff Emig coming down using the inside line. A little too tight. Bumps his shoulder on the tree. Stalls momentarily. That lets LaRocco get around. Further back in the pack, KTM teammates unhappy with each other, obviously. Couldn't wait till they got back to the pits. As Jeremy McGrath went on to win the first moto, followed by LaRocco. The second moto right off the start was disaster for LaRocco. Watching the middle of the starting line, he gets tangled with another rider and goes down hard, bending the handlebars, having to get up and come from last 
There went all of his hopes for an overall win. Emig, out front with a fist bump over LaRocco's leap, held off all the charges from Jeremy McGrath to win the second moto, but it wasn't enough. Jeremy's first and second was enough to edge out Emig for the overall win. Back to the live action, it's McGrath, Emig, Swank, and Ward, our leaders, and you see here Jeremy with that same attitude. Let's get out as far in front as possible and let everybody else fight it out. Well, that's, we've heard Skip Norfolk say that a bunch of times. Just have Jeremy pull away so no one can get a look at him and figure out what he's doing out there. And, uh, that's a big advantage. I remember coming in from motos and finishing maybe like kind of a distant fourth or a fifth or even a third sometimes. And when you don't see what the leaders are doing, you're sitting in the pits without any confidence. It's going, man, I don't even know if I can run with those guys, what line they're taking. Or, and you've got to come in and go, who won? Uh, things aren't going good. McGrath out in front of number two, Jeff Emig, kind of a lonely second place right now. You won this title twice. Well, a couple times, yeah. I won an 83 on the 250, both motos. I uh, just had a, one of those good days, and then I switched to the 500s for 84, and Brock Glover and I had a duel to the, to the end, and uh, he was chasing me down the second moto, went down the final lap. I was like, boy, because he was putting a lot of pressure on I could relax that last half lap. That corner right there, in fact, right at the top there, he tried to put a move on me. The same place that we saw LaRocco and uh, Kudrowski get together a couple years ago. So, now this track has been notorious for uh, historical moves and Trans USA's, Trans Ams used to run here. I remember seeing a race here with Roger DeCoster, some of the Europeans coming over. That's where Mark Barnett got his start. A lot of history here. Damon Bradshaw coming off a fourth overall at Southwick took second in the first moto behind Jeremy McGrath. Let's go down to Marty Reed in the pits, who's with Steve Butler. Steve, it looks like he's got a good ride going in fifth, and he's within striking distance of uh, at least four more, three more places. Yeah, he seems to have some speed going, which uh, he's even going a little bit faster than he was in practice, which I think is good. And uh, I know, I guess Jeremy's kind of going a little bit faster than everyone, but Emig and Swink and uh, Water, I think, are all within his reach right now. You think he can get second? He could. If he can maintain that pace, I think uh, he'll be right in there because there's still a lot of the race left. Ooh, look at LaRocco, his home track, and he's putting on a great show. You talk about name value right here. How about LaRocco and Bradshaw going at it back and forth? And they are, too. Bradshaw had the edge, LaRocco out jumped him and made the pass. Bradshaw said, yeah, right back at you. So now these guys are in a good duel. This could carry him up there to uh, the Honda Troy Riders. Maybe in younger years, they might have bumped a little bit more? Uh, perhaps, I know Damon was known for that. I think he got a bad rap for uh, how much he actually did it, but uh, he knows how to dish it out, that's for sure. With the weather cooling down, it looks like the rain has stopped, however. Well, the track's a little damp here and there just from some of the water they put on it. And uh, I think it looks all, all in all in pretty good conditions right now. There's plenty of lines out there. A couple of one-line corners like that one right there, but going in and coming out, there's plenty of room out there. David, does it surprise you a little bit how the track has actually held up? Because we've seen an awful lot of big ruts this year. Well, it does. It's not as rough as I remember it getting in the past. And uh, I don't know if that's really by design or not. It's it's definitely getting rutted in places. You see there those long berms and, and the faces of some of the jumps. But it just doesn't have any of those choppy holes, big breaking bumps coming in the corners like I've seen in the past. Of course, I'm not out there. And uh, it always looks a little easier <laughs> from the sidelines. Sometimes it felt like bullets on those chest protectors. McGrath, Emig, and Swank out in front. We'll be back with more of the Malcolm Smith National in a moment. AMA Motocross is being brought to you by Dunlop. Simply the best for your bike. We are back. Jeremy McGrath here in Moto 1 of the 250s has almost a 10-second lead. On the rest of the field as we take a look at Larry Ward now getting pressure from Mike LaRocco. Mike has really stepped it up after passing Damon Bradshaw. And Larry Ward can feel it as he came out of that berm. He looked over his shoulder like, who the heck is catching me that fast? And he wasn't there the lap before. Now Larry is going to be forced to really sprint to the finish because uh, LaRocco is coming quick. He moved around Bradshaw, who's riding well. We talked to Steve Butler. He was impressed with the way Damon's riding, and LaRocco rode right around him. and. The pressure on Larry now. Well, this is the best race the Ward has had since Hangtown, Sacramento. Look how close LaRocco is already. I mean, he's just phenomenal. All this tight stuff. 
Now he's such a fighter. He's so strong, and he gets faster and faster as the race goes on. If he's motos for 45 minutes, uh, he'd be up there every time. Well, there's a good example of the ruts that we expected on this track. Cutting down some opportunities to pass. You don't want to get crossed up. Keep that front tire up. LaRocco with a swift move on Larry Ward. That wasn't the best thing that Larry could have done. He went way wide going to that corner. He knew LaRocco was there. Uh, kind of gambled, didn't want to change his line, but uh, that was a, a gamble. I think he knew LaRocco was coming, and I don't know if he's got anything for him. So it's LaRocco and Ward ahead of LaRocco. Ward's teammate, Brian Swink. Swink riding good. He really has held up well. Yeah, he's not fading at all. He's still got a good pace going. I don't think he's fading. I think if anybody's catching him, which uh, isn't fast enough, it's got to be LaRock only because he's just riding a little quicker. Here comes Bradshaw. Bradshaw's on the attack of Larry Ward next. It looked like for a moment once LaRocco moved around Damon that he backed off, but he's apparently regrouped right here, and he's got the pressure on Larry again. Let's check out this week's Honda riding tip with Skip Norfolk. When racing in the sand, there's a few things you're going to do differently than you do in hard pack condition. For Southwick, the main thing we probably do is get our bikes set up for a sandy condition as opposed to a hard pack condition. Generally, our suspension settings are a little bit softer. This is going to allow you to soak up the more round bumps that you have in the sand track as opposed to small square edge bumps. The second thing you're going to need to do is work on yourself as a rider. You need to carry momentum through your sandy corners. If you watch guys ride, the guys that are going fast carry speed into the corners, through the corners, and out of the corners. That's where the race is won and lost. For 1-800-Collect Fox Racing, this is Skip Norfolk. Well, Skip's got his rider, Jeremy McGrath, way out in front here in moto number one as we check out fifth place Larry Ward being hounded by Damon Bradshaw. Ward's got to be saying, hey, why is everybody picking on me? Well, because you're just not going quite fast enough, I guess. You know, you get a good start like that, and you got to keep the pace up, or they're going to knock on your door. Right now, Damon is there. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at Damon, and he's charging everywhere. Both it, he and LaRocco, and Larry Ward's riding good, too. You can see him all in the frame right there, and they're back in fourth, fifth, and sixth. It makes me wonder what you got to do to be out front. Well, sometimes we have to admit we're just not good enough. Well, yeah, that's tough to do when you're somebody like <laughs> LaRocco, who's won championships, Damon Bradshaw, who's with the talent that he's got, Larry Ward with, with the experience, years on the circuit. Uh, these guys definitely know how to go fast. They, they know uh, everything about it. It's just they can't get the job done if you don't have all the pieces of that puzzle together. Larry really picking up his boots going through those ruts, making sure he didn't catch a toe. Well, Larry might have the biggest feet out there today. <laughs> he doesn't true. want to catch a toe. I had big feet, broke them a bunch of times, and then I started riding on the balls of my feet a lot. That must have changed your style. Well, it did a little bit. In fact, I ended up moving my foot pegs back about a half inch just so I could be more comfortable out there. Here comes Damon. He's got a good angle, does a little wheelie. Comes into that corner pretty fast. Can he hold on to it? Larry Ward giving him a real bar-to-bar -bar battle. But Damon is not giving in. That's a good line by Damon as he went over the jump. Coming down to that corner, he knew he had the room on the inside. Charged in there, had to wheelie over one of those braking bumps. Uh, good idea, so he could get back into braking. Larry Ward gave him a little challenge, but Damon had the inside line. Ward tried to stay close uh, somewhat to uh, Damon Bradshaw, just in case Damon makes a mistake. Out in front, we've got Jeremy McGrath, and he is wiping the field up as Jeff Emig is in a lonely second. Damon Bradshaw just now moving into fifth place. That big uphill double, they just came up. Jeremy's jumping all the way over the whole thing, doing the triple every lap. So, you know, that's one of the places he's making time every lap. He's making a split second everywhere. He's fast through that corner, and the guy's just a notch above. He makes it look easy, but all great champions do. He's even taking that tight turn so much faster than everyone else. No, he just seems like he's a gear higher, a better line, a little bit faster everywhere. Right here, you know, content to go through that deep rut because it's the inside quickest line. Jeremy didn't always take the roughest line as he didn't have the fitness. He was out there looking for timing and the smoothest line, but now he just goes wherever he's got to go to get the job done. And he's out in front once again with Emig Swank, LaRocco, and Bradshaw, our top five. We'll be back to Redbud in a moment. You're drawn to it. By some bizarre attraction, you find you are not alone. 
MTV's Buzzbin CD, a first-time gathering of one dozen of the most consuming tracks from the MTV Buzz Clip Collection. Sea bike. Want bike. Buy bike. Get free helmet. Right now during Suzuki Fest Summer, when you buy a sleek, responsive Katana 600 or 750, you get a hot Katana helmet totally free. Wow! You can also get some incredible deals, like zero down, low monthly payments, or low APR financing. So come on into your participating Suzuki dealer. Get a hot new Katana, a great deal, and a free helmet to hide that silly grin. <laughs> A few things you should know about arena football. The field is a little too small. The hitting a little too severe. And the scoring is totally out of control. It's like putting a football in a blender. This summer, step into the arena. Arena football on ESPN2. Welcome back, Art Eckman, David Bailey, Marty Reed from Red Bud Track and Trail in Buchanan, Michigan. It is Jeremy McGrath in a breeze. He's not making mistakes. He has no pressure behind him from Jeff Emig, and it's just a, another walk in the park for him. He's getting pretty used to that. I'm pretty sick of walking in the park by now. I don't know. The guy has just not had a challenge from anybody this year. I mean, he's, he's had some challenges from... Jeff Emig, but always in the end, he comes out with the overall. Today, it looks like he's on his way to another one. It wasn't until some other riders like Mike LaRocco played interference that really helped Jeff's effort out in winning the overall. Of course, that coming at Mount Morris where Jeremy went 5-1. Uh, just a lackadaisical first moto admitted that he just wasn't motivated out there. Guys were passing him, and he said he just kind of let him. So I guess that's the only way to beat Jeremy is to to find a day when he's not motivated and attack. <laughs> Few and far between, David. Of course, in your day, you always had so many bikes banging on you, you had to stay motivated to survive. There were a lot of things different about those days. The works bikes, uh, the motos were a little bit longer. Uh, they split us up from different classes at times, and uh, it just was an era where a lot of guys were equal, and it was like having five or six McGraths out there. These days, McGrath, it's not that he doesn't have any competition. The guy's just phenomenal. I expected his legendary string of wins in Supercross to draw a lot of fans, but I was a little surprised that his domination in motocross has made for record crowds everywhere we've gone. And my goodness, you'd think he had wings. Oh, jeez. They should serve peanuts on that flight. And Art, I think that's probably one of the reasons that the fans do come out to see this guy. I mean, look, he's the only guy able to jump that uh, consistently, and that's worth coming to see. Jeremy McGrath on his way to his 12th moto victory. There has not been an event this year that he hasn't won at least one moto in. And a tremendous number of sweeps, as you well know. The checkered flag for Jeremy McGrath. How many times have we said that this year? I never get tired of it, really. Jeremy McGrath, Jeff Emig, Brian Swink, a nice job of holding on to third. Mike Morocco up to fourth. Larry Ward settling for sixth place. Our Marty Reed now is with the champion. I guess the first thing is, you didn't know anything about the carnage that went on behind you in that first turn off the start, did you? No, I didn't see nothing. You know, Jeff was out in front and I was in second and uh, kind of just was trying to get my lines together. The, uh, you know, the tractor made some good lines out there and, and it was like berm, so I was just uh, trying to feel my way. Well, and we, and we talked to Skip during the race and he said that, uh, you know, the strategy was sprint the first 10 minutes and see what Jeff had left because of the, the injury he sustained earlier in the day and it looked like it worked. Yeah, I had a f pretty fast first 10 minutes out there, and second 10 minutes, it looked like, you know, once you get warm, probably obviously as Jeff did, he, he got some gathered up some lines and probably picked some time off on me for a couple laps there, but towards the end, we just stayed the same, and, uh, you know, I, I was just trying to save a little energy for next moto. Yeah, guys, I love this. He says that he clicked off some pretty quick laps, 242s. It was quicker than he was running in practice. We'll see him in the second moto. Speaking of in practice, Jeff Emig had a big fall and received a tender wrist. But he was able to hold on to second place, second fastest here today. Marty? 
I guess the first question is, uh, how's the wrist? The wrist is better. You know, it was actually my palm. You know, and, and I iced it a whole lot there after we did the first interview. And uh, you know, you know, I've been taking aspirin and stuff. And you know, once you get in the rhythm of the moto, you just don't even think about it. I was, I was real stiff at the beginning, and uh, you know, I wasn't wasn't actually showing what this bike, you know, what can really do. And uh, then I started switching up some lines and started jumping the big, you know, the big uh, triple out by the parking lot. And, and you know, like, and I dropped my timer quite a bit. You know, maybe from four to five seconds. Albertina having transmission problems. Lawrence got run over. We'll have to see how he does. Between motos, rest for the riders. Work for the mechanics. We'll be back. Dirt track racing haven't had much to cheer about this year, what with cancellations and rainouts plaguing the still young schedule. But the AMA Grand National Stars actually got through the main event last weekend. And it was one to remember, for better or for worse, the latter if your name is Will Davis. A southward move for the Grand National Tour turned up blue skies at the Oklahoma City Half Mile Saturday afternoon, though promoter slash rider Ronnie Jones claims the series was facing another close call with Mother Nature. Yesterday, you know, they had damaging winds and big heavy rain, some hail, and it was pretty scary for a while, but uh, today's turned out beautiful, and uh, I think it's supposed to be partly cloudy the rest of the night, not really any chance of rain, so I think we're in good shape. Straddling the number 21 Harley, Heat winner and series leader Will Davis took whole shot honors ahead of defending champ Scott Parker, 23 Kevin Atherton, 16 Ronnie Jones, 89 Kevin Varnes, and the Iowan Rich King, who ran in sixth position. Parker, still trying to overcome Davis on points, was going for his fourth win of the year. Meanwhile, one of the great battles of the night consisted of the two Kevins, Atherton and Varnes, off of turn four. 23 Atherton would maintain the inside line on the slightly rutted oval. That advantage was key. Varnes bobbles big time. That allows Atherton to have third outright. Now hold on for some serious red flags. If you're squeamish, close your eyes. A great Parker Davis side-by-side -side battle for the lead is dampened when Davis lets his left foot drag a little too close to Parker's 750. We come off the corner there and he got a little sideways and just nipped his foot and uh, hopefully it ain't broken. Hopefully he'll be back in a, in a week or two. Well, it was broken plenty. A snap left fibula leaving Davis praying for another rain out and looking for his boot. Don't open your eyes yet. Two laps later, more trouble. Davis still with that broken leg goes down and is hit by Ricky Graham and then Steve Moorhead. Graham was taken to the hospital with a broken shoulder while Davis suffered a badly sprained ankle on his good leg. Keep your eyes closed, here comes the replay. You hate to see this sort of thing in racing, but Davis was first to admit it could have been a lot worse. Now you can open your eyes. Kevin Varnes led the final restart with Parker, King, and Moorhead in tow. King was the only one happy after last weekend's rain out in Quad Cities. The rain erased his failure to make it to the main for the first time this year. He's still looking for his first podium since the Daytona short track, but like everyone else, he'd have to wait for the last restart. Georgie Price went down. The red flag sent this event way past curfew. By the wrong side of midnight, officials are trying to get half the main event in to pay the purse and points. It would be called with four laps remaining, just as 80 Rich King nipped Parker and Barnes for his first win of the year. Jones and Moorhead rounded out the top five. Once he got up there, you got two competitors like, like Kevin here. He was, man, he was hooked up and fly, flat flying. And you got Scott Parker. He can go fast on anything. You know, when I got out front, I thought, man, I was trying to make this Honda about five feet wide. <laughs> The injured Davis is still your leader, but now only 11 ahead of a tie between Parker and King. Now, believe it or not, the latest report from Davis is that he is resting comfortably at home and hopes to be back in the saddle for the Sturgis Bike Week event August 7th. We're all hoping Will has a speedy recovery, and that's what he'll need. Now let's check the wires from abroad on this week's 1-800-COLLECT Honda Scoreboard. One of the greatest traditions of motocross near New Berlin, New York. 